Hello everyone, I am RTS Man, and today continuing on with the Grand Tactician Civil War CSA playthrough. So, uh, just a quick recap, while I was cleaning everything up and uh, after the last battle, the, uh, the Union decided to attack Evansville, Indiana again. <laughs> I mean, it hasn't worked for them the last uh, three times they've tried it, but they're apparently willing to try again for some reason. <laughs> but here we are to uh, make them regret that decision again. I believe the enemy had a couple other armies which were due to uh, arrive. Oh, they've got pontoons ready. It must be over here on the Springfield River. I think there were a couple other enemy armies due to arrive soon, though I think I think one of them was due in about four hours, and the other one I don't remember at all. Oh, nope, there they are. There's the enemy. Let's draw the guns, just in case the enemy uh, is going to launch an attack against them. Let's get Loring into a single line. So they're clearly coming from Springfield, which means we can redeploy steel to uh, encircle them. Actually, hold on. If these are... On second thought, let's uh, wait for orders. Yeah, we can send steel through to here. Because the enemy has built pontoons there. Let's make the parrot rifles a defensive position for us. Oh shit, they're going all out. That's a full-on frontal assault. Well, let's stage Walker to uh, fill the gap. Walker and Robertson can be set up behind the line, uh, just behind the uh, walls to move in as soon as there's an enemy position. Aha! Uh -huh, we're actually pushing the enemy back quite uh, decisively. And the casualties are solidly in our favor. And we have more riflemen to deploy as needed. Oh, Hill's cavalry is not looking good. Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's deploy uh, Wheeler to engage, to break off Brown. We're losing our cavalry like this. Let's send Canby after Sturgis, Pemberton after Cooper, and Cutshaw after Hunt. What the hell are you doing, Wheeler? Why are you just standing there 90 degrees to the enemy? Oh, great, we lost Wheeler. All right, nice. We're doing something about the uh, enemy caval or enemy artillery now. Also, these Enfield Musketoons are insanely good. Look at that, 400 yard range. That's the same as a lot of our rifles. Let's go for Whittlesey with that one. Pemberton continues to engage Fife. Every time I think that we've beaten the the Yanks here in the in the West, they managed to come up with another entire army. I gotta give them credit for their tenacity. I'm just waiting until our readiness is high enough to move to Louisville. And then the war in the west should actually be over. Oh, there's the second army. Alright, let's break uh, Fife and Hartman and get the hell out of here. Because we're not gonna, gonna get a chance to do any more... You know, that looks like uh, our only way out if we can break these these guys. Yeah, we were in a good position there, but we're not going to... Okay, we might not be able to get the cavalry out before the enemy arrives. Well, this battle was an emotional roller coaster, I must say. From the start where we thought we were absolutely crushing them without challenge to, you know, when the when Burnside's army arrived and suddenly we were the ones getting our asses kicked. And, uh... <laughs> to now where, uh, well, we've kicked their asses quite decisively. The Culloch's men barely saw any of that action as well, so they might be ready to move on to, uh, at, to Louisville with the next one. Bring Kentucky into the Confederacy. That'd be quite a change for this war, wouldn't it? There we are. 4,000 rifles and... Seriously, we only captured eight guns? Okay, let's see. 
take quick stock of everything. Oh yes, yeah, so I'm currently trying to get Prussian weapons. And uh, I'm trying to uh, also get repeating rifles. Oh, they can have hull carbines. Nice. We actually get to do something with those. So the Army of the Shenandoah and the Army of Northern Virginia are still hanging tight where they are. And, while, and this time, uh, while we attack uh, Pittsburgh, the enemy wouldn't dare uh, withdraw any of their forces from around here, or else they leave a massive opening, which uh, you know the ar which our other armies will be able to exploit. I wonder if they're going to launch another attack at Frederick. Oh, that's only about uh, ten thousand five hundred men. Oh yeah, McCulloch can absolutely handle that. Assuming they'd even be willing to launch the attack given that we have uh, demoralized them quite a bit after these last few battles. Oh, shit, there's another army ready to move. We'll have to get uh, Claiborne in there very soon if we want to, if we want to save McCulloch. Okay, this is actually a decently even battle. which should eliminate most of the threat of the uh, Department of the West hanging out there. Although... Yeah, okay, that's what we're going to do. We are going to do exactly the same thing as we did at, uh, at Appomattox Station in the Union playthrough, and simply uh, dig in deep, just uh, outside the position. Let's try my uh, sort of dragoon idea I had earlier, you know, using the cavalry as uh, infantry. Yeah, there's no way in hell that the enemy is going to be able to cross this, which means they're basically forced to come uh, right here. So yeah, when the enemy arrives, it's going to basically feel like they're under fire from a bunch of sharps rifles, rather than, uh, you know, just, you know, it'll give them... Uh, reason to pause, particularly with these hall carbines, seven rounds per minute rate of fire. It'll allow us to get a good amount of casualties in early on. Okay, there's Sickles. Let's see how he handles this uh, interesting deployment of cavalry. Okay, Sickles has muskets still, it was, or smoothbores, it would seem. I think once we break our, uh... Yeah. Okay, yeah, this is... Not go... Okay, they've realized the uh, numbers advantage they have, and they are... They are taking advantage of it. Let's get our cavalry the hell out of there. This did not work quite as well as I thought it would. Yep, run like hell, boys. Alright, everyone... What the hell is McNair doing? That was not a good idea. What the hell? McNair! Move your ass! Okay, full assault, full assault. Alright, let's uh, slot in the smooth bores. Nice and quick. Yeah, okay, so never doing that again with the uh, cavalry. That was a bad idea. I don't care that they took Howell Bridge. What matters is that we... Well, we are the ones defending the actual bridge. I don't care that they took the position. Good lord. The amount of bodies that we've already uh, covered the bridge with is ridiculous. Holy shit. We've, we've turned around those casualty numbers, That that's for sure. Yeah, we took a minor numbers advantage and made it major. This is the importance of a choke point, right here. There it is, victory in Louisville.
we have Kentucky. That's Dixie. Of course it's... For once it actually plays a Confederate song. Almost every single battle that I've won so far in this game, it's as the Confederacy, it's played a Union song, like Battle Hymn of the Republic, or When Johnny Comes Marching Home, or Irish Volunteer. Those are the three main ones. I think there's a couple others. But that time, Dixie, there we are. I think once it was like Yellow Roses, Texas. But yeah, there we are. We got Dixus. D Dixie. <laughs> Dixus. <laughs> That's a new one. All right, well, I think I'm going to leave this episode here. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Be sure to let me know what you thought in the comments. And uh, if you decide to give me any tips, like uh, someone was very uh, recently, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, if you like the video, be sure to drop a like. I am RTS Man, and have a good day.